If you're in the market to buy a new home, distressed properties or foreclosures can sound pretty appealing. Who wouldn't want to save some money? Stay tuned and I'll tell you four ways to buy a foreclosure. Hi, I'm Kelly Nitz, the leader of the Kelly Nitz team. Thanks for joining me today. It's easy to be fooled by what appears to be a great deal. Buying distressed properties is something you should really weigh carefully before taking the leap. If you decide to move forward and buy a distressed property, here are four different ways a distressed property can be sold. The first is pre-foreclosure or short sale. We've covered short sale in previous videos. That's, you know, when the owner still lives in their home and maybe they can't, they're just struggling to make their payment and the um, owner and the bank have come to an agreement because there's a situation, some type of hardship that they aren't able to make their payments. So they agreed with the lender to go ahead and try to do a short sale before the foreclosure process starts. So when the property enters a pre-foreclosure stage or short sale stage, the owner still has some time to pay off that debt to the bank. They can still make a sale and pay the debt off to the bank before it enters the foreclosure process. The second is an auction sale or the share of sale. So if there's not any longer a chance for a short sale and time is, you know, accumulated, the homeowner still hasn't made their payments, then the bank gets a little frustrated and they post it for a share of sale. And you can find out about these share of sales by looking online at the county auditor site usually. And um, so you go to the share of sale and the property is sold to the highest bidder. Anything in excess of what they owe the bank um, will be given back to the home seller, but typically there's no ex, you know, there's no money left over at that point. So um, when you go to a sheriff's auction, you generally have to have a certain amount of money down, and you know, or cash, cash, cashier's check or something to give when your bid is accepted. And then um, they will, you know, you can get financing also, but you have to have a pre-approval letter with you. But I recommend that you go and attend a couple of share sales. Um, and just kind of like observe how they work and, you know, if before you actually bid on your own property that you might want to own at a share sale, just go to a few and see how they work. They're very interesting and um, typically though the lender does end up with the home back in their hands because they do want to protect their interest. So you can pick up a deal at a share sale, but I would say probably 80% of the time the lender ends up with the home back in their hands. The third are REO properties. REO stands for real estate owned. And that means the house did not sell at the sheriff sale and it is in the full possession of the bank. Typically what happens is that they hire a realtor to do a lot of work for them for many months before the house hits the market. So they send the realtor out to do drive-by occupancy status reports and to do BPOs or broker price opinions to give their opinion of value and they do that for a number of months for free. So what happens is when they get the clear title or the clear deed, the sheriff's deed is, is recorded, then they give that realtor the listing. So they're always put into the MLS. So that's kind of easy to find a um, REO property just by um, getting the information from the MLS. So um, yet yeah, usually the, the bank and the realtor price it right, you know, at a good sales price, which does create more competition. So there's less room for negotiating, but the, um, the benefit is that the lender is usually obligated to clear any liens and make sure all the taxes are paid up. And uh, one thing you do have to be careful of though, and check that many people miss is to make sure the water bill is paid. And that could sometimes be over a thousand dollars. So make sure if you're looking to buy a bank property that you make that phone call to the water company to make sure there's no money owed to the water company because here in this area, you as the owner are going to be stuck with it because the water bill stays with the property, not with the owner. So it can be pretty safe, but I do highly recommend when you buy a bank owned property to use an attorney because also in addition to this, um, title companies that the REO companies use are usually from out of the area and they, you know, come in, they travel in from somewhere else. And a lot of times we, there's been many mistakes with title work. So you just have to have a good attorney review the title work. That's my recommendation is to have an attorney when you buy a bank owned or an REO property. 
And finally, number four, there are the government-owned properties or HUD homes, Fannie Mae, um, government-owned homes. These homes are a little tricky because they truly do sell the properties as is. So if you're buying a HUD home, for instance, it says right in their paperwork, you cannot turn the water on for your inspection. So, you know, it makes it hard to, to get a true assessment of what the um, what kind of condition the property is in. You can, though, air um, pressure test the, the plumbing to see if you can feel any leaks, but they don't want the water turned on because what if there is a problem and water goes all over the place? <laughs> So the properties are truly sold as is, and there are many addendums stating that whenever you buy a, a government-owned home or even an REO home, you have their own um, paperwork that you have to sign that pretty much says this is it, the property is to be sold as it is, and um, they cover, you know, they cover themselves. So you're kind of, you know, taking a little bit of a risk doing that, but you know, there is a chance that you can acquire a property at a decent price. So if you decide to buy a HUD home or a bank owned property, you really need to beware because many times these homes have been neglected for many months, many times. So a homeowner will identify that they're in trouble and they decide to just pack up and abandon the property. Sometimes they even take the carpet and some trim and you know whatever they feel they can get away with taking. And um, also the house has not been properly winterized. It's been sitting there vacant and uncared for for a number of months. And sometimes when they're not winterized, then the plumbing, you know, you get a, a pipe that bursts and um, then you have issues as a result of that. For instance, um, maybe if the furnace is in the basement and there's water, then that just ruins the furnace. You have to get a new furnace. Um, I think the biggest issue that I find with bank and REO properties and government owned properties are, um, is mold. And that's a big concern, especially with those um, that have allergies. Uh, particularly black mold. So buyer beware with a bank owned or um, a HUD home. With all these types of properties, the closing process is much more complex. So you really need to hire a good real estate attorney to go through the whole process with you to check that title work and to be there at the closing table to make sure there aren't any errors and that aren't any of the risks are not being transferred and to the buyer, such as the water bill and these types of things. So I'd like to thank you for allowing me to share this information with you today. Hopefully you like the information. Click the like button if you did. And if you'd like to see more videos as they become available and want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button and um, you'll receive notices as we um, add more videos to our channel. And finally, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and we'll get the answers back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for joining us.